I am so glad you're here. Meet my friend, Josh Clark. And uh, the, his, yeah, his, uh, his lovely wife, Chelsea, is down here. They have 14,000 children. And uh, I'm not even gonna try to name them all because I'd totally butcher that. But uh, I am grateful that you guys are here with us. You probably saw his bus out front and thought to, my, thought to yourself, oh Lord, Chuck's got another politician in the house. Um, you know, I, I honestly have no problem bringing politics into the church. I just don't wanna bring church politics into the church. I mean, there's a big difference in those. But I do believe people of faith need to vote out of a conviction. I, I genuinely believe with all my heart, we, we Americans, we, we have a right, but, but we have a responsibility to vote. But could I just say to you as Christians, you have a responsibility to vote a conviction. I, I am perfectly okay if you disagree with my vote. That was what makes America awesome, right? I mean, diverse thought is what makes America incredible. So it's okay that we can disagree, but could we disagree in love? Could we disagree in kindness? Could we disagree with decency and honor? And so uh, just hear me say, um, I, I realize that um, I realize that the church isn't the place where you do political work, but let us not run from being a church that talks about politics, because we 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 are we are members of a far greater kingdom than America, but we are Americans, and let's let's not run from that. This is the greatest country on the planet. We got plenty of our faults. I get it. I'm part of it, but Lord knows we it's still the greatest country on the planet. So Josh. Yeah, there you go. Somebody back there got fired up. Yeah. So, uh, so Josh, here, here's what y'all need to know about Josh. Josh and Chelsea used to be members here, and then they became Benedict Arnold and went to a super big, cool church, you know. And, um, you know, and I, it broke my heart for a while, and it was just like, wow, you know, I just leave poor little country church, you know, little old Sugar Hill, and Chuck just hanging on the edge of the cliff. But, but you know, he's back today, and you know, just. <laughs> You know how politicians are. And so, uh, <laughs> but seriously, so Josh, Josh and Chelsea were members here for 10 plus years. And they live uh, up a whole nother county away. And their choice to be at Christ Place, which is an incredible church with an incredible pastor, uh, was for their kids to be able to go to school and go to church with the same kids. And I think that's a healthy thing. And so, uh, welcome home. It's great to be home. Yeah. So uh, sometime back, for whatever reason, you decided to leave a healthy business career, a uh, horse farm where there looks like it's pretty peaceful, uh, you know, a, a lovely family. From the outside looking in, everything was going your way. And then how on earth did you decide to get into a race for the U.S. Senate? I mean, you jumped off the high dive and got a wedgie that can't be pulled out. <laughs> Well, I got a picture for you. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you for getting me started that I'll way. I promise you nobody else is going to introduce you that way. You know, no, they, they, uh, I need all the help I can get, Chuck. You know, when, it, when you see a politician who is relapsing, yeah, yeah. I hate that word. Well, but I was that is true. And now you, I'm relapsing. You served two, you, uh, you had two terms as a state rep here in That's Georgia, right. right? That's right. Yeah. And you were running for third uh, seat. I when, thought when I you, was. You left and called me. I did. And I couldn't believe you called me to pray for you. I mean, I'm not sure I'd call me to pray for me. But, Thank you. But I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, but you did. You picked up and left what looked like such a beautiful life and decided to jump in this U.S. Senate seat. And I guess my question is, what were you thinking? Yeah. <laughs> was I thinking? Uh, well, you know, to be honest with you, Chuck, it wasn't part of the plan. Yeah. It was not part of the plans. In fact, I felt like and in the beginning, it wasn't even part of the plans. Yeah. When uh, I, I grew up in Suwannee, you know, right down the road, and my mother is here. Hey, Mom. Uh, the mother of Marjorie Clark, mother of 10 children, raised 10 of us. And, um, you know, I, got, you. I was blessed to grow up learning God's word. In fact, being forced, but I look back and I'm grateful to memorize yeah. books of the Bible and all that. They gave me a great foundation. I thought I was going to be a pastor or a missionary. You know, I don't think anybody, you it's know. It's the only group that Americans like less than politicians exactly. and, and attorneys. Is well, you, you beat me to it. I was going to say, I don't think any parent grows up saying, I hope my child will be a politician one day. Yeah. You know, never heard that. But, um, you know, there was a verse, though, that was really heavy on my heart coming right out of high school. And that is when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. 
Yeah. But when the wicked rule, the people mourn. And so I just got involved trying to help get good people because I feel like that, as you said, I think it, the, a strong society starts with strong churches. Absolutely. And everything else should be downwind of the church, the culture, politics. But I, but I believe that a healthy church should be pushing people out like mm -hmm. you've always done, mm -hmm. should be equipping them to mm -hmm. go out in the highways and the byways. I just didn't know that the byway for me was gonna end up being politics. Yeah. But in Romans 13, he calls them the, the ministers of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so anyway, God called me, and that's another story when I, when I ran 12 years ago, and I, I wanna thank this church, it was encouraging. There was a couple of us here yeah. But you know what? They loved on all of us. Yeah. And um, in the end, I had the privilege of serving you guys. And that was amazing. But you're right. I'll never forget that call to you that day. And you know, there's two verses that I need God to help me with and uh, have a balance between them. And one is that the plans of the diligent lead to prosperity, mm -hmm. right? So I'm a planner. We both are visionaries, yeah. right? But then at the same time, there's the other verse that says many of the plans of a man, but the Lord directs his steps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so when I called you that day, I kept saying no to an offer, and I kept saying no unless God tells me to. Right. Well, I ended up realizing right. God was trying to pull me, yeah. and I was trying to go this yeah. way, and you prayed with me well, that God's day. Well, God's will will splat you up against a rock every now and then. Yes, sir. Yeah, so then you, 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 you moved to California and uh, became a hippie, <laughs> and then you cut all your hair off and became a surfer yes, boy. <laughs> and I think that's pretty cool. Uh, but in, but when you got back here, it seemed like you had everything just the way any human would want it. Yeah. You know, a beautiful family, a, a beautiful horse farm. Things seemed to be cooking a good business. Life was good. And then uh, somewhere along the way, you sense the Lord saying, Let's, this is what I need to do, but I'm not sure I, it's what I definitely want to do. Right. But it's what you believe God called you to, yes. to jump in this race. Because honestly, right. it's... It, a sane human doesn't jump in this race. Especially today. Right, because I mean, yeah. you're, you really are, you're gonna get just absolutely murdered, whether you're a conservative, a liberal, yeah. a moderate. If you have a thought, there's somebody out there yeah. gonna beat you up. That's right. You know, and so, but I will say, I, think, I do think Christians in our modern world of politics, yeah. one, we, we, we've gotta learn to turn down the same rhetoric the rest of a secular world has. Yes. You got to turn that down a little bit yeah. because we're losing our Christian voice because we're just screaming like everybody else. That's right. So, um, in the midst of this, Josh, you, I, I appreciate Mom's influence, and I've heard your story about yeah. how you how you got here. But I just share a little bit with our folks quickly about so. Sure. What was a little bit of that heart string? How does God say to Josh Clark, "We're going to run for the U.S. Senate"? Yeah. Well, it started with a broken heart. I didn't realize where this was going to lead, but just sleepless nights, like I'm sure that many of you have had just broken many of the things you're talking about, just seeing our country so divided mm -hmm. and seeing people hurting so much. And um, one of those sleepless nights started, resulted in us hiring speakers just to come in and encourage people that were more than overcomers. It's yeah. a non, not for profit um, group we started. And just saying we're more than ever. You know, I've, I've been looking for my invitation. I didn't, I didn't get that one. You know, that's okay. I, they, is that okay. I'm not, I'm not offer? wounded by it. I'm not, 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 not I'm bitter or anything. But we're more than overcomers through Christ, which loved us. But a week before the election, um, it was a night that I'll never forget for the rest of my life. I was just on my knees in the closet. So I didn't wake Chelsea up, just praying for our country, praying for our leaders. And that night, Lord just spoke to me in a way I would never expect it. Mm. Because again, as you said, we thought we were just blessed beyond what we deserved and with plans that we had. Um, we were actually headed to Costa Rica, we thought, for a year. Yeah, you were going to go down there and learn Spanish. A, and a ministry you've already birthed, but go live right. with, kind of get immersed in the culture. It was, it was the plan, right? Serving as living was the group, yeah, we were doing. And uh, but that By the night, way, I've understood that there's good surfing in Costa Rica, too. There is. is right? There is. I see what's happening here. <laughs> yes. And um, that night... The Lord just spoke to me. When Chelsea woke up, I said, honey, you're not going to believe this. But it's like the Lord just showed me last night that I'm not done. Here mm -hmm. I thought I had done my time and yeah, yeah. I'm washed my hands of that. Yeah, I mean, I most people on. after two terms are like, no, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And you took a break and then jumped in the deep water. Well, I had, I had left unopposed and because um, God had called us out. And then, yes, this was the deep water, yeah. especially how, how it 
turned out. Yeah, of And course. that next week, we all know what happened. And then somebody said to me, are you going to run in two years or six years? And I said, oh, I'm not running now. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. later on, my childhood hero got in the race. I think yeah, you know yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I was like, oh, I'm definitely not. And the Lord just spoke to me. Yeah. And uh, we were on a date night. And I'll never forget this moment. But we were just talking about what's happening in our country. And I turned to my wife. Just sudden conviction just hit me. Mm. And I turned to her. And I said, honey, I haven't even considered what if God was calling me now? Right. I, mean, I know I serve right. the God of not only Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, but Gideon, yeah. story of Gideon yeah. and David and Goliath. Yeah. So we came home and we literally just got on our knees and we called Chelsea's parents, we called my parents, uh, we called our pastor over there. And, uh, you mean so, the big, super cool church? No, no, there's no, no pastor cooler than, that, than Chuck. <laughs> but you know, I can't lay all my burdens on you. You've been there for me. But we said, please just, just pray for us. Yeah. And um, the Lord ended up just speaking in incredible ways and people out of the blue challenging us mm -hmm. after I had turned to my wife with tears in my eyes at one moment said, I think God's asking us to run now. Yeah. I had the second person in just a few days say to me, when are you running for office and yeah. challenge me? Yeah. So, um, you know, I think that, you know, obviously God's not calling all of us to politics, but you know what praise I think? God. <laughs> praise God, right? <laughs> But we need some people to rise up. So if you yeah, think do. it's not you, it probably yeah. is, because that was me. But there is a lot of truth to that. I mean, honestly, I, I, I promised God I'd never be a pastor, you know? And here I am having the greatest year. I'm living my good old days right now. Yeah, but I can see. So, so if you had a, we, we got to wrap up. But yeah. if you had a word and all the gloves come off, just say whatever you want to say. Yeah. What, what message would you leave us with today? Well, I would leave you with the message that I delivered to the 73 kids that I coach in cross country. In fact, my wife and I coach together. And I would share with you the message that I gave them that God ended up throwing back on me. So as I share it with you, you'll probably need to remind me, okay? But that is in Corinthians, it says, for God has chosen the foolish things of this world. And I think that oftentimes that as believers, as saints, that too often we look at around us when God's calling us and we say, oh, but they would be better. They're equipped. Look at their experience. Look at their track record. Look at their background, right? And we're always seeing everybody else instead of, and we miss when God is calling us. And he says, I have chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise, the base things, the things which are not to bring to nothing the very people who think they're all that, so that who? so that God would get the glory. Amen. So in the end, we would lift him up. And yeah. I was challenging these kids and I was telling them, you need to rise up. Don't look inside. Don't look at who am I and what are people saying to me, but look at who is he. Amen. And I shared with them, I didn't know this was gonna get thrown right back at me, but I told the kids, I said, 12 years ago in my first campaign meeting, God told me to share that verse. Amen. And I was like, no, you don't open a campaign meeting. Yeah, that meeting. is not. Hey, vote for me. I'm the most foolish, guys. We can win. Yeah. I said, but we won in a landslide victory. And it doesn't always happen that way. That's right. But God will always be glorified. And, and then at the end that day, God spoke to me that day. Normally my devotion comes out of my quiet time that day with my coach, the kids I coach. But the Lord spoke to me and said, the next time you come, share with them that the eyes of the Lord are yeah. searching to and fro right. upon the whole earth, looking for those whose hearts are fully committed. They can show himself mm -hmm. strong on your behalf. And there's one more thing I got to say to that, though. This was something I had that verse memorized, but it was when I was driving to practice and I looked up, I remembered what, you know, what you teach. You know, a proof text without a context is a fool's text. And so I went back to look at it and I realized, was reminded that was King Asa. Those words came from a prophet to King Asa who had walked with God in his younger days and God had done miracles and yeah. delivered him. But as he got older, and I saw myself doing the same thing, started using my own strategic thinking yeah. to figure out, okay, yeah. God wants me to do this, but how do I do it my way? Yeah. How do I do this where it makes sense to me? Mm -hmm. And God convicted me that day. And I got to the kids that day and I said, you know what? I've got a lesson I thought was for you, but it's mm -hmm. for me. Yeah. And I realized I needed to be faithful and step up and believe God. And thankfully other people were challenging me at the same time. I needed a lot sure. of challenging. Yeah. Yeah. But so, you know what? We jumped in off the deep end, but you know, and I want to remind you of this last thing is that when God calls us, you know this, I know this, but I got to keep being reminded when we gave our life to Christ, we forsook all to follow. 
and he's asking me every day to jump out of the boat in the deep water to where all I can do is keep my eyes on him or I Amen. will sink. Absolutely. As surely as I'm st sitting here, I will sink, right? Great. So he's asking me for full surrender every day just to trust him, so step good. out, and believe that he is God. Amen. And I'm not. Amen. So Amen. praise How God good. for that. How good. Chelsea, you come on up and uh, join us. We want to pray for y'all. Yeah, yeah. Kids, come up. Come stand with us, please. I'm yeah, blessed yeah. with them. They're right here. They're in this with us. We made a family decision. We need a bigger stage. Y'all come on up. Come on. This is where all the pretty people are right here, man. This is cool. So I want to remind you again. Listen. Uh, this isn't about who you vote for. This is about having a conviction. Find your conviction. Don't punch, any, don't punch any cards until you've talked to the Lord about it. Let him guide your steps. He is always faithful and just to do so when you ask him to. Join me as we pray for Josh and Chelsea and his family. God, we praise you and we thank you for the testimony and for your goodness, for how you continue to call people out and to use people for their good and for your glory. Would you protect this family as they crisscross the state? Would you go before them and make their way straight? Would you go within them and let them know of your love? And when the days seem to be just unbearable, carry them. So Lord, we, we just praise you for your presence and your goodness. And God, I do pray for this great country that we turn our heart toward you. Not just in our leaders, but our own heart that we would believe once again that this is, this is a place where we can worship freely, that we can disagree in love, that we can indeed find a place where we can be candorous, but we can do so with graciousness. So Lord, thank you for the time together to be reminded of how you call people out and up and into the thick of the work. And give Josh and Chelsea wisdom beyond their human ability. Give them patience beyond their capacity. And give them discernment beyond what we know to be normal. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Bless y'all. Chelsea, take good care of him. He's a handful.